Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Now, one of my first videos on YouTube was a comparison between different CAD programs for 3D printing. And surprisingly, this is also my second most watched video on the channel ever. So, because it has been a really long time since I made this video and because this video is only in German, I decided to remake this video in English a bit better and with some new programs. Now, some of the programs are still the same as last time, but I've also included some new ones, which either have only started coming up or which I found along the way. Now, this video is primarily targeted to modeling for 3D printing, but of course you can use these programs for other applications as well where you need 3D models, like render 3D model rendering or CNC machining or other things like that. But I don't want to ramble on too long, so let's just head over to the computer and start with the comparison. So here we are on a computer and these are the five programs that I'm gonna show you today. Now I'm gonna start here on the left and as you can see it's Google Chrome. It's not a 3D program, but there's actually a very good program that you can use inside of your browser that I'm gonna show you. And it's called Tinkercad. Now I'm already logged in here, but if you're not, you just can create an account. It's completely free and then you are on this page. And let's just create a new design here to kind of see what it's all about. And here we are in the interface. Now, this program is very simple. You can just take whatever shape you want here. On the right, for example, let's take a box, place it here, and that then we can edit the size here. It shows us how big it is. We can even go in here and edit that ourselves. Make that 30. And we can rotate it if we, if we want. So we can do quite a lot of things right here. So we can also adjust some things in this panel right here. I can give it a radius to make kind of more an organic shape or I can change the length and width here. You can also change the color here to whatever I want. That's more useful if you have a bigger project and if you want to stay organized. What this whole function here is I'm gonna show you in just a minute. For that I'm just gonna take a cylinder in here and place it somewhere inside of our previous model. I'm gonna make it a bit taller and we can see here it's inside. I'm gonna push it down a little just for an example. And here I'm gonna choose hole now. What that means is that this isn't a solid but it treats it as a subtraction tool. So our final model now is this block minus this hole, which is a cylinder. And using these techniques and modifying this, you can create some very interesting things and also just generally useful things. And you can build pretty much any model using these pre-made shapes, but there are also like more different things that you can check out here. For example, some different connectors, which you can use to connect different parts of your print. And there are is, even is a community where you can share and download other sh more complex shapes that people made. Like this here, for example, I want this, I want this here, in here, and then I can have it in here and already have this shape in here. I could even give feedback here. There are also some more advanced 
things in here, but I'm not gonna show you everything today as it's only just a brief overview. But as you can see, this program is very intuitive and you're gonna be able to work with it within like half an hour or so. Now, if you want something a bit more professional and maybe want to spend a bit more time, we can go to our next one. And it's quite a popular one called SketchUp. Previously SketchUp was owned by Google, but now they got sold to Trimble, which doesn't really change much for you, except that there now is a free basic version and a pro version. But most of you are gonna be just happy with the free version. So we're gonna just choose a template right here, start using SketchUp. So this is the screen that gets presented to you when you start up SketchUp. We can just delete this dude here. And um, this works a bit differently. Instead of just building, having shapes in 3D from the start, you first draw something in 2D and then extrude it into three dimensions. So let's, let's just do something simple here with the pen tool. Let's just make a shape, maybe something like this. Now, that's just a 2D drawing for now, but then we're gonna take push-pull here, which is basically just extrude, and then we're gonna take this and put it into three dimensions. Now you can also see here on the right that there is so are some instructions which guide you through how to use the different tools and how you can make something with SketchUp. This is very great if you're just beginning and don't really know what you're doing. Now to modify, let's just scale this top plane here and you can see that you can do some a bit more complex shapes with this here and it, it works great as well. And maybe we want to create an offset of this face here and then Let's choose this face and extrude it down. And then we have this indent here. And with this you can create some more advanced things and there are also quite a few more advanced tools. So this program, while it is quite, still quite easy to learn, can be used for many professional applications as well. So right off the box in SketchUp, you can't export your design as STL. Now you could just export it as an OBG file and it still would work in most slicers, but what we can do is go to the extensions warehouse here, where we can add plugins and here on the top extensions, SketchUp STL pops right up. Um, this is the extension we're gonna use to export it as STL. So we just download it and then install it. Next up on our list here is Autodesk Fusion 360. Now Autodesk offers a wide variety of different CAD programs. Tinkercad is their like beginner program. Um, they're also offering AutoCAD, which is quite a popular CAD program, and Fusion 360. Now Fusion 360 is one of the newest ones, but I like it quite a bit better than AutoCAD and the other programs that they offer. I think it's easier to learn and it also has quite a bit more features built in without having to use many different applications. Now, like all the other Autodesk programs, if you buy it, it's quite expensive. But for hobbyists, they offer it completely free of charge. Now you have to make an account and you have to apply for a hobby license, but that's quite simple. and doesn't take up much time. But when you're logged in with your hobby license, you are in this interface. Now, it is quite a bit more complicated than SketchUp and Tinkercad, but I'm just gonna show you the very basic start. Now, most of the time you're gonna create a new sketch here. You can also create directly some forms right here, but I find it more I find it easier to just create a sketch first. Let's just create a sketch here on this plane and then just like in SketchUp before, I can 
use these different tools to create my 2D sketch here. Let's just do something similar, like before. And then I can either do something more, let's just add this here and then stop sketch. And then I have this 2D sketch here in the 3D world. Also, just like in SketchUp, we can extrude it here. We're gonna choose this one and can extrude it for a cer certain height. Great, now we have this model here. We can also modify it in many other ways right here or go even into different other modes here. But let's just stay in here for a moment and for example, when we create some more things, let's just create a cylinder right here on top of here with the center here, this radius and the cylinder, let's cut, go down. And then when it goes red like this, it's automatically in a uh, hole mode. There's also this pop-up window where you can choose different things, like you can change the diameter, the height in here, and you can cho choose the operation. Either you can join it, so it adds the two things, you can cut, intersect, where it just takes the sum, you can create a new body or a new component. The difference between these two is not important at the moment. So let's just take a cut, make a cut, and here you can see that this cut is in here. Now, what is so great about Fusion, I think, is... Now, let's say we did a whole lot of different things to this form, but we think, oh no, I want this corner to be a bit longer. Now, we can just go into the same sketch again, change this to this, stop sketch, and it goes back and changes all the things. We can also see this down here in the log. Here you can see first we created a sketch, then we extruded it, and then we made the cylinder. And we can go back here and just see what it did. Or we can also go in here with right click and edit the feature. And then we can retroactively um, change what we did in this operation. So let's say we did it 50, but actually wanted only 44i. So we can retroactively change that. This allows you to create complex things, but also if you messed up somewhere and only notice it way down the line, it's very easy to change it. And then when you're finished for 3D printing, just go to make up here, 3D print, and you can take out this tick, you don't need it, and export it from here. Of course, you have to choose what. Now I'm not gonna go into these other things here, but you can also render it in here, animate it, make simulations with different materials. You can use CAM for CNC machining and many other things. So if you learn this program, maybe you only need a very small amount of features at the moment, just use it for for 3D modeling, but later you get into CNC. The great thing is that you learned this part already and it stays the same and you can expand further and further. I'm still learning how this program works myself as there are so many different features, but I think this can easily be in the very professional and there are many professionals who use this on a daily basis. Now, there are also some other free CAD tools, for example, FreeCAD. Now, I personally have never really used FreeCAD, but it seems like a very good program as well, and I've heard good things about it. So I wanted to feature it here as well. It's pretty similar to like SketchUp or Fusion, but I don't know too much about it, you're gonna have to uh, research it on your own, but let's just uh, create a new document and and then let's go in maybe part mode here and create this cube. We have it here in three dimensions and then we can do things with this cube. 
Now, I really don't know much about this software and how to use it properly, but from the features I saw that it has, I can say that you can do some quite good work with this program as well. It's just something completely different and you're gonna have to learn it yourself. But just googling it on YouTube will bring up many many tutorials. Same with Fusion 360. And the last tool is also quite well known, but not as much for 3D printing, but more for 3D rendering. It's called Blender. This is a completely free open source software, which is extremely powerful. Now, it is also quite an overwhelming interface at first and not, as, not that easy to learn. But with some YouTube videos, you're gonna be able to grasp it as well. Now, it works quite a bit different than the previous ones, being that you also have the shape already and then you modify the shape into many different things. I'm also not that good with Blender, but when you're done with modeling your shape, you can just export it here as an STL file. Now I wouldn't recommend Blender if your intentions are to just use 3D modeling for 3D printing. But if you want to get in 3D design and animation and maybe do things like that, it's a very good tool and if you created a beautiful scene, then you can also just 3D print it. So that's nice as well. But in conclusion, no matter which program you choose, you're just gonna have to choose one program and learn it. And with all these programs that I showed you today, you can create very amazing 3D models, which for most hobbyist user, any one of these programs will be just fine. You're just gonna have to commit to one. Now, when you don't wanna spend hours upon hours learning the program, I, re I would recommend Tinkercad. And while I know how to use F Fusion 360, sometimes I just use Tinkercad because it's so quick and easy and you can just do it on the go in a web browser. And if you want to learn a bit more and get more serious into it, I personally would recommend Fusion 360. I've had very much success with it. And as I already said, if you want to do 3D animations as well, Blender is great, of course. So I hope you have gotten some more information about these programs so that you can decide which ones you want to learn. And why don't you leave a comment down below which program you are using. I'm really interested in what people actually are using and not just some guy on a forum. Also, if you like this video, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe to this channel. I also have Amazon and eBay affiliate links down below with where you can support me without paying anything. And if you want to follow me on social media, these links are also down below. And if you're interested whilst I'm doing other than tech, you can check out my second channel. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and until next time.